So, so the graph yeah. on the left, sir, the x-axis, what is signifying, sir? The graph x-axis. on the left. Uh, right, sir. Sorry, right. The below graph. The edge yeah, deviation. Oh, it is just saying that as you move away from, you know, as you move from one part of the chip to another, uh, the edge, the the thick, this this variation is simply varying. There is no constant. Uh, there is no what do you say? Uh, there is no pattern there. Hmm. Yeah. Is there a pattern? No, there is no pattern. Some oh. places there is more roughness. Some places there is less roughness. It is just how polysilicon got deposited. Yes, sir. Okay. So now this is what we just now discussed. Even if the variations remain constant, even if the line is, you know, delta L we said is constant, you see the impact across technologies is very different. Huh? That is why as we go to still advanced technologies, more and more variations are coming into picture and they impact memory design very, very significantly. Okay. Uh, so, sir, yes. sir, actually here only uh, in the first slide also I had this question. So here it is written that the inter- we uh, in the random uh, variations, we had three kind of variations, right? But here it is saying that the intrinsic random variations tend to be constant magnitude. So what exactly do you mean by the intrinsic random variations? I mean, that line edge roughness. roughness. Line edge roughness is intrinsic to the way device is manufactured. Hmm. Interface roughness is intrinsic to the way silicon dioxide is deposited. Okay. They are intrinsic. They are not because of something else. You know, two polys are placed right next to each other. It is not one poly. So this device, the the dopants that will come under one one gate, is not dependent on any other gate. Is it dependent? Whether I placed another gate close to it or far away from it, is, is, can it, can, is it dependent on that? No. Therefore, it is called intrinsic variation. Well, proximity effects and others could be considered as extrinsic variations. That poly necking and everything, they are extrinsic variations. And so in the random variations, there was also one uh, subcategory of pseudo. So how yeah, is it? Pseudo was, that? yeah, pseudo is something like you have uh, two devices, but there is a temperature gradient because of some heat being generated in some place. Now there is a temperature gradient. Physically, the devices were similar, but now due to higher temperature in one cell, in, in one device and lower in the other, the mobility has changed a bit. Okay. Hmm? There is some so, eye drop that happened, let us say. So everything was same, but due to 20 millivolt eye drop, now the VGS that you observe is little different. Those are pseudo variations. Again, you cannot say what will happen. They are dependent on some patterns. How you will run the device, what what how the user will activate the device, and so on. Okay. So So now this yes. So so like in uh, intrinsic, we are only taking consideration the device and the process. I mean nothing else is there. But in the pseudo, we are considering in uh, uh, apart from the device some external event. I mean, yeah, which we do not have control over. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, in terms of VT variations, there are multiple reasons why VT variations could happen. We talked about dopants, we talked about interface roughness, we talked about uh, uh, line edge roughness, and so on. Hmm? But uh, there are other variations also that there could be band gap variation, there could be work function variation, and so on. Hmm? And all of that. All of that uh, could be because of different reasons. Well, proximity effects. So some are systematic, some are not systematic. And they all have to be modeled into your device equations so that when you run Monte Carlo simulations at your end, you're able to see impact of all of them collectively on your circuit behavior. Okay. As I mentioned, we will share the entire big slides with you. You can study at, study them in detail. But I, this was just to give you a glimpse of various kinds of variations that happen. And as Raghav was just asking, there are some variations which are environmental in nature. For example, supply voltage fluctuations could happen, temperature could change. And there are some variations which are operational in nature. 
for example clock jitter and uh, you know static and dynamic variations in terms of fire drop junction temperature and all those things across the chip so when we say environment environmental variation means you decided to run the chip at 1.0 volts instead of 1.1 volts that is a supply voltage variation okay or uh, uh what is it just give me a minute sorry this is jumping or there could be clock jitter which is happening on the fly okay so these are pseudo so these are the clock jitter and everything these are pseudo variations pseudo random variations okay they are not intrinsic they are pseudo random but they are there they may happen at some time they may not happen at some time therefore they are dynamic you cannot always assume them to be there but these environmental variations so you can actually simulate at 1.0 volt and see the impact or 1.1 volt and see the impact of it on your system so these environmental variations are a part of your pvt condition uh, the operational variations are something that you need to leave margins for okay so again as i said some of the variations can be modeled some cannot be modeled and whatever it is you have to operate your design accordingly you want to model as much as possible uh, at times you model the exact variation at times you model the variation in a statistical manner so then you will need to run the monte carlo simulations to verify your circuit okay and uh, yeah this is a quick summary that there are different kinds of variations and there are ways to handle them you can make structurally good layouts you can make matched layouts so that at least systematic variations are minimized hmm? but there are some variations which will normally always remain to handle them you can use larger devices larger widths larger length so that the impact of those variations is reduced hmm? the more the gate area of your device the lesser is the impact of random variations on the device okay so for the sense amplifier when you design the sense amplifier you will not use minimum length devices if you want to reduce the random variations uh for the memory cell we do not use the minimum length devices two reasons we want to reduce the leakage but also because the variation impact can be very very significant if you use minimum length devices okay sir uh, uh, sir you can explain this dfm thing sir dfm means uh, design for manufacturability uh, we saw that there were variations you remember the systematic variation slide that we the second slide that we saw jahan pe necking ho rahi thi there were bends in the poly and everything yes sir some contact pads were bigger some contact pads were lesser and so on okay now this led to variations in poly width yes sir view we know that this is systematic variation if such yes. systematic variations can lead to yield loss then the technology teams will give you an additional set of rules which are called as dfm rules design for manufacturability rules what this means is that if you have sufficient space in that region please give that extra spacing please keep only you know parallel polys do not bend the poly here and there so for example for example in 45 nanometer there is a dfm rule which says do not give bends on poly in 32 nanometer we said no bends on poly are allowed at all so a rule of an advanced technology could still be followed in a older technology so that variations are reduced and that is called as design for manufacturability सर मतलब कि वेरिएशन से बचने के लिए हम लोग एक एक्स्ट्रा सेट ऑफ रूल्स फॉलो करेंगे पर सर इससे सर हम लोग का एरिया कॉम्प्रोमाइज इसमें भी हो जाएगा नहीं तो इसलिए मैंने कहा अगर स्पेस है तब ओके सर सो दैट एरिया लॉस नाउ ओके सर एंड दिस कैन बी डन इफ यू डिजाइन विद द डीएफएम ऑलरेडी इन माइंड यू कैन एक्चुअली मेक वेरी गुड डेंस लेआउट्स नो नो एरिया पेनल्टी बट वेरी डेंस लेआउट्स एंड यू कैन मेक देम ओके सर यस ओके so 
i will uh, i will post the entire what do you say tutorial in the classroom i would strongly recommend that you study the tutorial in completeness but this in this lecture i kind of have introduced you to the most important very sources of variations and what to do about them but there is much more the that tutorial is very very big i have just picked up a few slides over here so i would i would strongly recommend that you see the full tutorial raghav uh, sir can you move uh, one two slides before i had a so in which there was a table comprehensive table i mean uh, mm -hmm. before that so before this i mean uh, before this also yes sir mm -hmm. so i mean uh, from for example the first row that i am seeing so you have sent the doping profile right and you can there we could various causes and then you have the variables put there but i can see that you have all the kind of doping if if for example certain uh, fluctuations or variations are happening due to the doping profile you will be modeling them as vt variation right yes that you're saying so but on the variable side you have included the well proximity effect that is a structural thing and the doping fluctuation that is an interesting thing so i mean you are modeling no, the no, no, random no. and the structure are so, same no. vt no, no. <laughs> not same vt what we are saying is when we decide the vt when we decide the vt we have to be some variable of well proximity effect also coming in some variable of uh, random doping fluctuations also coming in and so on so you will see that when you will extract layouts in advanced technologies there will be lot of extra variables that will be so abhi aap jab 65 mein dekhte ho when you extract a device in 65 nanometer what do you see you see w l p d p s a d a s and that is the definite that is the kind of place where the uh, variables end am i right in advanced technologies you will see there will there is another variable called a there is another variable called uh, po2 act there is another variable called something else what does that mean we are adding variables additional variables in my extracted net list so that i can model the well proximity effect into devices which are susceptible to it i can model stress effect wherever it is relevant you notice dopant fluctuation has been in brackets mentioned as intrinsic so you cannot model it through extraction what do you do you model it in statistical simulations through monte carlo you see it is in, mentioned as intrinsic over here uh, so, so sir like i mean agar main ek like pt ki equation man lijiye main ek bt ki equation likhta hu to usme jo uh, bell proximity hai distance in sab ke constant terms aa sakte hain basically but multi ha which are multiplied which are so there will be some effect which will be multiplied with the value of well proximity or distance from the well as re recorded in your extracted net list okay unke coefficients kuch ban jayenge jaise main kar paunga yes aur yes. okay so so ek aur cheez thi sir jaise bolte na actually ye cheez to mujhe clear nahi hoti ki what do you mean as bolte na ki statistical modeling karte hain wo cheez matlab sir kya matlab bol rahe hain aap so, you done monte carlo simulations na Yes sir. What do Monte Carlo simulations do? So, I mean, the Gaussian curve. We have been told that. What is the Gaussian curve? So, I mean, that we have a we have a bell shaped curve in which we have a sigma and a mean value, and we say that that most of the devices will be lying at the mean value, but sigma after this sigma, certain device will be on this side or that side. Basically, I mean. So that is statistical modeling, where you are saying seventy percent of the devices will be within plus minus sigma. another another 25% of our devices are within plus minus 2 sigma another uh, 3% of devices are within plus minus 3 sigma that is statistical modeling okay okay so usi ko hum statistical modeling bol rahe hain sir that is about statistics na how many devices are within this range we discussed na before the pehle you talking about exactly the same thing okay sir yeah so yes hmm? so statistical modeling means that you define how the statistics would be you cannot define this is okay for well proximity effect you ex, you got a variable in your uh, extracted net list you simply multiplied and you know what the vt change was but for dopant fluctuations you cannot do that you can simply say the statistics linked to dopant fluctuation and then you run monte carlo then yes sir okay got it sir thank you sir Okay guys all